Inside the boundaries of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park lives some of the greatest biodiversity in the entire world. In fact, Great Smoky Mountains National Park is home to the world's most diverse salamander population on the planet, and the Hellbender Salamander is the prime example of that uniqueness. The Hellbender Salamander, also known as simply the Hellbender, and locally known as the Snot Otter, is a giant salamander that lives across the eastern U.S. and parts of the central U.S., but mainly calls the Appalachian Mountains home. This giant salamander can live to grow over two feet in length and lives in fast-running, unpolluted rivers filled with large flat rocks or logs. The hellbender has a flat head and body covered in slimy skin. It has four legs. The front legs have four toes, while the back legs have five toes. The tail of a hellbender is shaped like it would be used to swim, but the hellbender doesn't swim. Instead, it uses its well-gripped toes to climb over and around rocks up and down streams. A fully grown adult can grow to be up to 29 inches in length, which is only the fourth largest aquatic salamander species in the world. Three species of salamander native to Asia can grow even larger. Most salamander species appear to have many of the same characteristics as one another, but not the hellbender. It can immediately be recognized for its unique properties. Its massive flat body with thick folds is a dead giveaway for a hellbender. While undoubtedly the size of the hellbender salamander is its most recognizable trait, other traits, such as its single open gill slit on each side and its five-toed back feet, are also easy ways to prove you're in the presence of a hellbender. Hellbender salamanders can live to be 25 years or older. In the wild, they live about 15 years. As pets, they can live far beyond 25 years, but people are generally steered away from keeping them captive as pets. Most of all, the hellbender's habitat is a place that has a sufficient amount of small, but fast-flowing streams filled with rocks and logs to nest under. Examples of perfect habitats would be virtually anywhere in the Appalachian Mountains, including the Smoky Mountains and the Allegheny Mountains, but also parts of the Ozarks as well. They also have a large presence along the Ohio River Valley due to the copious amounts of smaller tributaries and offshoots from the larger river system. It is vitally important that these fast-flowing streams are well oxygenated and unpolluted in order for the hellbender to flourish. Interestingly, hellbenders are considered to be habitat specialists, which means that they have evolved to play a specific role in a niche environment. It is thought of as a habitat specialist because it needs a constant flow of dissolved oxygen, cool temperatures, and fast-flowing waters. These necessities can be hard to find in certain environments. Hellbenders tend to be very solitary and stationary creatures. Unless they are actively hunting for prey or trying to reproduce, then they are homebodies. They usually live within an area of 200 square meters. Hellbenders are very territorial, especially when it comes to other hellbenders invading their home. Chances are you will never find more than one hellbender under the same set of rocks for this reason. Hellbenders are at least partially nocturnal, and most active during the early summer when water levels are highest. The only exception to the hellbender's solitary life is when they are trying to mate. The female will usually go to a male's nest under a set of rocks to lay her eggs. In fact, male hellbenders have been known to urge multiple females to lay their eggs in their nest. The male will then protect the nest as best he can. The hellbender plays an interesting role in its ecosystem. It is actually both prey and predator. Snakes, large fish, and turtles are the major predators of a hellbender. As for the hellbender's diet, it usually feeds on small fish and crayfish. Sometimes it will consume insects, worms, mollusks, tadpoles, and even smaller sal salamanders. In some instances, it will even cannibalize other hellbenders or their eggs. Biologists theorize that cannibalism for hellbenders is nature's way to keep their population density at an acceptable level. Over time, 
Hellbenders have naturally adapted to live in shallow but fast-flowing waters. Their extremely flat body shape allows water to flow over them, allowing the hellbender to walk upstream or find natural cover under rocks more efficiently. The massive skin folds down their body allow them to more efficiently breathe. Their skin secretes a substance that allows them to be immune from most types of fungi. All over their body they have light sensitive cells, including their tails. They use these to make sure they are under sufficient cover when they choose a nesting spot. Since 2022, the hellbender species as a whole, which includes both the eastern and the Ozark hellbender, is classified as vulnerable. However, the Ozark hellbender has been classified as an endangered species since 2011. Unfortunately, the usual suspects are involved in the decline of the hellbender as a species. Pollution, habitat destruction, dams, and human predation have contributed to the steep decline of the hellbender since the 1980s. The situation is even more dire for the Ozark hellbender, as nearly 80% of its population has declined since the 1980s. There are said to be only 590 Ozark hellbenders in the wild in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. Recently, efforts have been made to counter the extinction of the Ozark hellbender and the overall vulnerability of the species. There are some Ozark hellbenders that are being bred in captivity. There are also scientists who are collecting eggs from the wild and raising them in captivity so that they can re-release them. This re-release program has had success in New York and Ohio with the Eastern Hellbender.